Testing competency, public notice versus three will. Has anyone seen The Matrix, the film The Matrix? Yeah. I mean, probably there isn't a, a, a decent conspiracy forum that hasn't mentioned The Matrix. <laughs> but what does The Matrix tell us? The Matrix tells us that the world is an illusion. Your purpose is a source of energy. For an automated system, you are less than a slave. Sound familiar to the real world? Could they have given us a better public notice in The Matrix? They even tell you what's wrong with the system in the film. I mean, done in a way that even a 14-year-old child, if they went and saw that, should know what's going wrong with the world. The system is not only automated, it is broken and needs to be rebalanced, yet most people prefer to remain asleep. Have you found that? So, public notice. Public notice versus free will. So, people want to stay asleep. They look at you and say, oh, the matrix is just entertainment. It's got nothing to do with the world. We're all free. This concept of trust, this concept of estates, it's all a myth. Australia is a commonwealth. Australia can't be registered as a corporation with the SEC in America, even though it's on the internet, even though it's right in plain sight. No, 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 I refuse to believe what I see. I, I prefer to live in, in ignorance. That's free will. Free will. It's your choice. Have you seen Alice in Wonderland? <laughs> Through the looking glass. Alice, you're a pawn on a chessboard. You're an amusement between elite families. The Red Queen, the White Queen, they were, they were related. They were sisters, weren't they? Elite families until you wake up and, uh, to the fact that you're asleep to reality. So over here, world war, terrorism, recession, crisis, it's all games. It's all games of the elite. Until you stand up and face your demons, you remain at their will. You're just a pawn. Free will. Okay. So where do you start? This is not designed to start any epileptic fits, <laughs> but it's, it's, it's not, a bad, not a bad image to sort of segue into where do we start. Because it does, you know, the law does kind of create this sickening effect really when you try and think of where to start or what to do or you've read something and you've, later on you find that it's not true. The law is deliberately designed to be confusing because it's an occult art. Guess who they lie to first? The lawyers. The first person the law lies to are the lawyers and then it lies to you. You read their dictionaries, Black's Law, Constant Revisions, the Jurisprudence, their Case Law, thousands and thousands and thousands of pages to find one relevant fact. That's not efficient, is it? You could take all of that and you could present it in a consolidated form. You could take all the law that's ever been written in the world and you could present it in a consolidated form and you could read it, and it'd probably be quite large, but you could see it in plain sight, yeah? But that's not how the law is designed, is it? That's how Yucadia law is designed, that's what the canons of Yucadia are about. But that's not how. 60, apparently 64 million laws in America now, between the states, the, the local and the federal. 60 million laws in one country. Impossible, impossible for even one army of people to comprehend that. So we have all these laws. So let's start at the beginning and let's start with the obvious question. What, what does law actually mean? If you want to upset a lawyer, you ask them what is the law? There you go. Oh, I know what the law is. What is the law? The law is rules, standards, norms, permitting or pro prohibiting certain actions. It, it really is that simple. And it comes from all these different groups. It comes from religion, a little image of St. Peter's here. It comes from legislation, looks surprisingly like St. Peter's, but it's actually the US Capitol building. It comes from science and discovery, and it comes from custom, like the Roman cult, the pagan Roman Empire. So laws are claimed to come from many sources, including all of those. That's, that's really, generally speaking, what the law is. 
the, the highest laws are canons. And I know that people, when they come to Eucadia and they come to, to read some of the material of Eucadia, get concerned because when they first heard the word canon, the, probably the only context they've heard canon is canon law, the Roman cult, right? That's the most common. If you say canon, canon law, people go, oh, the Catholic Church. Oh, ecclesiastical law, yeah? Well, that's exactly how they want you to think. Why? The highest laws are canons. Why? How? Canons are rules, bar, norms, maxims, measures or standards uncontested. Uncontested. That is key word in this over time. So if there's a maxim that is used across a range of cultures, bless you, across a range of uh, time periods and it's uncontested, then it is a maxim. More than a maxim, it's a canon. And here we see how canon law is very much a, mas a matter of control. Again, this plain sight. You see the laurel wreath here of SPQR through the Vatican, its keys. See the wreath in the Masons, the wreath in the Senate, and of course the United Nations. It's all in plain sight. The whole system is based on canon law. Much of the visible and hidden laws of the world are claimed from Roman law, Vatican law, canon law. Now you know the foundation of law of their system. The root of their system is canon law. Here's a, here's a canon, a maxim. All law is first auricular, spoken. Have you heard that before? So from the beginning of civilization to the present day, all law is still considered spoken into life, not written into life. Now you wouldn't, you wouldn't know that if you went to the magistrate's court <laughs> or parking fines, but the reality is that that law is auricular. And if you think about it, you see signs of spoke, spoken knowledge and the importance of spoken knowledge versus language in all the cultures. Take this land again in Australia. Australia is an example of a high developed culture with the indigenous where the right to know something was done through initiation and it wasn't that there was an absence of written knowledge their paintings were all forms of writing as were the Celts in their symbols all forms of writing but writing in an alphabetic sense as we read here was considered an abomination because it was a way of transmitting something to someone who may have no right to know what it meant. So we see that for thousands and tens of thousands of years, law, the very beginnings of our civilization, comes from this intrinsic canon. And we see it in all the language they use with us. Laws begin as bills which are read. First reading, second reading into Hansard. Monarchs and leaders pronounce laws. Rogatory, rogation, it's all speech. Officials are invested in office after speaking an oath. Yes? Defendants attend and present their defence at hearings, not readings. <laughs> Court cases are founded on the sacrament of confession. And the modern legal system may forget this maxim, but it remains paramount that all law is first auricular. Hence, knowing who and what you are is fundamental because all the paperwork that you may do, uh, all the remedy that you may subscribe to may amount to naught in the sense that your day in court or your day of proof may come down to you in this role of speaking. It's not easy. Public speaking is not the easiest thing for people at the best of times. Not in a situation where the whole room is designed to intimidate you. The judge is six foot above you, panels, doors, people with guns, it's all designed to turn you off. But at the end of the day, your strongest weapon in law, once you know who and what you are, is the ability to speak from the heart. And it's something they have no remedy against when you do it. Canon. A controversy in law must be resolved. Okay, that's, that makes sense, but 
what we're saying here is all debts must be paid, all contracts must be honoured, and anyone that brings a controversy before the law, it must be resolved. In other words, where there's smoke, there's fire. If someone has raised something with you, if, if they've raised an issue against you, it's not going to go away. Once it gets clocked into their system, it's not going to go away. It's going to ultimately have to be resolved one way or the other. As much as I would like issues that occur in my life sometimes to go away, we've got to face up and, and, and deal with it. So it is a canon, it's a, it's a fact. So when a controversy is raised, it cannot be ignored, it might be unfounded, unfair, unjust, wrong, but the burden unfortunately rests on us to prove the flaws. And I put this here because it's important for us to remember and to encourage you, please, to, if you do, and when you do have the chance, to read what's on One Heaven. Justice is to honour the essence of the living law through due process in rendering judgement, demonstrating fair remedy. So there is such a thing as justice. It does exist, even if we find none of it in the present system. It doesn't mean that it is a false flag. It doesn't mean that it's an illusion.